It is said that with age comes wisdom. The idea that the older we get, the wiser we get. We may lose our youth and beauty, but we gain knowledge. I don't think Richard Vobes got that particular memo, because from what I can tell, his mental acuity has been on a sharp decline over the last few years. Uh, and let me present some evidence. This is a clip from Vobes's short-lived children's television programme. It was on Scottish TV. And as you can hear, he is speaking a kind of gibberish. What you duff and flump and flump and die, you dope ruffler. I mean, literally, that was gibberish. They are made up words, presumably because the Equity Actors Union has a lower minimum rate for non speaking roles. And I assume that if he uh, was speaking gibberish, that cost the television production company less money. But if you think that was pure nonsense, have a listen to something that Richard Vobe said only last year. I've learned many, many things, especially in the lawful side of things, that the all caps name, the name that we get our letters to us, the bills, the utility bills, the demands for payment, all that kind of stuff, uh, is always in the all caps name, isn't it? That name has been um, created by the Crown, the Crown Corporation, and it's not us, even though our parents have uh, given that name away. So ask yourself, which made more sense? The ludicrous rantings of Richard Vobes in the mid-90s, dressed as uh, the alien character Snug from the short-lived TV show Snug and Cozy, or what he said just then, this ridiculous nonsense about um, our names when written in block capitals, not referring to ourselves. You may have thought that was just a, a typographical convention born from the limitation of computers in the, the early days of computing. But no, Richard Vobes believes that if your name is written in block capitals, as in all capital letters, then it somehow refers to a different entity to yourself. Where does he get this kind of zany nonsense from? Well, the answer is, as you may have guessed, the, the ludicrous nitwits that he has as guests on his show. And we're going to look at one of those guys today. His name is Peter Stone, otherwise known as Sovereign Pete. Let's begin with a little look at Pete's backstory. It all began years ago, we're talking almost 30 years ago, when we had access to the internet for the first time. And I knew that I was being lied to. Whenever I used to see something on the TV, I think, hang on a minute, I'm being lied to. This is not, this is not correct. So I'd go off and do some research. Sovereign Pete is another one of those uh, genius graduates from the University of the Internet. He's a man who is the living embodiment of the Dunning-Kruger effect, that uh, phenomena whereby the less people actually know about a subject, the more they think they know. And as we'll see, Sovereign Pete, otherwise known as Peter Stone, seems to think he knows a lot about a whole wide range of topics. Now, law is something beyond your reach, okay? You cannot change it. It's beyond man's grasp, okay? For example, the law of gravity. If I drop this pen, it goes down, okay? Yeah. So, there we go, everybody. I'll just get on. It goes down. Yeah. I can't change that law. I can't make the pen go up. So that's law. Law is something you can't change, okay? This is something that Peter does rather a lot. He is confused about words that can have more than one meaning. Take, for example, the word law. He's confused between a scientific law or a law of nature, which means a, a observation, a generalization about the expected behavior of objects based on a series of observations and experiments, versus law as in uh, the rules and regulations of society, rules made by governments to regulate the behaviors of humans. It's the same word, it's a different meaning. The English language is full of these kinds of words, like bank could mean the place where we store our money, or it could mean uh, the side of a river. It, it doesn't mean they're the same thing, but in, in Pete's mind, every single one of these coincidences has a, a deep and a profound significance. And that is going to inform, or should we say misinform, 
his view of the way all legal systems work. Someone says you've done something illegal, what they're actually doing is they are referring to a policy within a contract. So when the policeman pulls you over, by the way, policeman means policy enforcer. I'm not a classicist, but I know enough Greek to know that the word police comes from the ancient Greek word polis, meaning city or government. Uh, presumably the idea being that uh, police officers are the representatives of the government, intended to keep the government's laws and peace. Uh, Pete presumably has plucked this nutty idea about this alternative meaning of the word from thin air, or, or possibly his own anal cavity. Who can say? Pete has some very strange ideas. Uh, like all sovereign citizens, his ideas about cars and driving are particularly intertwined with his own sense of personal freedom. And in this bit, he's talking about the DVLA. In the UK, that's the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Agency, which is a branch of the government intended to regulate the use of vehicles. And once you've uh, registered your car with DVLA, you've accepted the highway code. And that is the contract that you've accepted. And now the policeman is pulling you over because you've breached a policy within the DVLA Corporation contract. In his wacky alternative universe version of the United Kingdom, just about every government agency and the government itself and also parliament, the, the part of government charged with creating regulations, the, the, the laws that we must all follow. These are all corporations that have no connection to him because he believes he doesn't have a contract with them. Peter believes that he is without any kind of responsibility or, or duties to society at large. He's a sovereign individual, a living man, and all of these other organisations are dead entities, especially the local council. For example, council tax. Am I obligated to pay it? Yes, you are. Turns out I'm not. I'm not obligated to pay it. There is no contract between me and the council. The council is a legal fiction corporation. It's a private, privately owned, for-profit corporation. No different than McDonald's. I suspect that the only fictional dead entity here might be Sovereign Pete's facial hair, because do you get the impression that it's painted or possibly tattooed onto his face? It just it doesn't look real. He evidently thinks that the council is simultaneously a fictional entity that doesn't exist, but it's also a real corporation like McDonald's, which I know for a fact definitely sells Happy Meals. Sovereign Pete evidently believes that the, the kinds of services that the, the council provides, such as refuse collection, road maintenance, or, or perhaps uh, social workers to protect children, uh, they aren't real or, or perhaps shouldn't be funded. Pays rent. Yeah, the yes. pair who pay rent because what you've become, when you're a parent, pay what rent. you've become is you've given up your child to the state, the state owns them, yes. you've become a parent and then you must pay the state to have your children. Children means chattel. So if you're dealing with social services and you knock on your door and say, um, are you the parents, are they your children? And you say, yes, they're going to take your kids. I imagine that if social workers were to come knocking on Sovereign Pete's door and demand to know whether the children running amok around his slovenly house were his and whether he was the parent, well, if he replied in the negative, as in denied being the parent, then that would be a very good reason for those social workers to become suspicious and possibly take away those children for their own good. because. Sovereign Pete doesn't seem to be of sound mind. He's not the sort of person that I could imagine would be a, a very good or reliable carer of children. And um, <clears throat> he seems to be confused about some very fundamental things, such as what is the difference between uh, the, the institution within British government that defines the, the laws of the land and also the nation's most popular provider of uh, French fries and hamburgers. Hmm. Parliament is a private corporation, the same as McDonald's. We have no contract with Parliament. Now, if you vote for your MP to get into Parliament, there's no contract between you and him. He doesn't work for you anymore. He works for a private corporation called Parliament. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that this is 
utter nonsense, pure, unadulterated twaddle from an ignoramus who's possibly his highest academic achievement was briefly being the, the school top trumps champion. Um, you'd be right if that was what you, you thought, but let's spare a moment for Richard Vobes because this is his show. And of all the unsavory grifters and insane wackaloons that he might have selected to put on his show, he has chosen Sovereign Pete. And in fact, Sovereign Pete has appeared on the Richard Vobes show multiple times because Richard Vobes regards Sovereign Pete as an expert. Richard Vobes looks up to Sovereign Pete and believes that Pete is a man of impeccable character and learning. So who's the biggest idiot here? Legislation. The word legislator means offerer of law. They go, oh, so this is what they're doing. They're offering me a contract. A major component of Sovereign Pete's audience is people who don't want to pay their council tax. In fact, people who don't want to pay any bills at all because perhaps they reject the idea that things need to be paid for, or they might even uh, deny that even money exists or money can be used to pay for things. It's a, a sort of selective amnesia when it comes to doing things they don't want to do because we're dealing with a community of man-baby idiots, uh, people who, despite the appearance of being adults, don't accept the responsibility that comes with it. Hence, you, you have these sort of guru grifters, people like Sovereign Pete, whose entire shtick is to provide a, a pretext for these people to do precisely what they want to do, or in fact, to avoid doing the things they don't want to do, specifically paying taxes. So that's why the council tax say, we're going to tax your dwelling because they consider you a serf who's bonded to the state. That's it's all in the language. It took me years to decipher all this. Years and years of watching bit shoot and rumble videos from fellow conspiracy theorists. Can you imagine how much research Sovereign Pete had to do in order to decipher the, the complex symbolism and, and layers of deceit within the British government, uh, where things often mean the opposite of what they superficially claim to be. It's a topsy-turvy world in which only keen minds like that of Sovereign Pete can penetrate and decipher this uh, intricate symbolism. One is reminded of the, the Egyptologists who, using the Rosetta Stone, were able to decipher hieroglyphics and, and make that ancient language come to life. Sovereign Pete is clearly an example of the same kind of genius. And he would like to know if you and I are the same kind as he is. Hence his carefully selected questions. Questions which will tell you whether you have the slave mentality, or maybe you too could be sovereign. There's some questions that I ask people, and I test them to see if they've got the slave mentality or the sovereign mentality, okay? Now, I'll ask you the question. You don't have to answer it, okay? And everyone listening and watching this, all right, just think of the answer in your brain. That is the normal way we think of things. What's your credit rating? Well, Sovereign Pete, mine is in the high 900s because I'm a very careful borrower who avoids debt and uh, makes sure that I, I always meet my repayment obligations. Does that answer your question? If a number popped in there and you were going to tell me what your credit rating is, sorry to tell you, but you were brainwashed. You've got the slave mentality. One nil to Pete. It, it seems that I am enslaved by my own mentality. The fact that I know approximately what my credit rating number is, apparently that has nothing to do with my life as a responsible adult who makes sure to uh, pay the bills and understand the system of credit and how money works. No, this means that I am a slave. I become indoctrinated to the system, the system that Sovereign Pete has somehow found a way to escape. Like Neo escaping from the Matrix, Sovereign Pete is no longer bound by the rules and strictures of our society, and his line of 
rhetorical questions clearly proves it. What's your national insurance number? It's uh, KC4980. <laughs> 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 oh dear, oh dear. Yes, if you're Good. thinking of your national insurance number, sorry to tell you, you've got the slave mentality. The fact that I was able to remember my national insurance number, that important number issued by the government and that has to be supplied to uh, accountants and uh, employers for taxation purposes. Well, apparently that has nothing to do with my ability to remember things and everything to do with the fact that I am a slave. I am within invisible prison bars that uh, I have become so accustomed to that I barely notice them. That is the wisdom that Sovereign Pete is bringing. In fact, if you are somebody who is able to remember any of these things, then you too are a prison. You and I are inmates in HM Prison, Great Britain. A, a sorry, sinking prison barge full of rotten latrines and uh, drug dealers and, and uh, raging knife crime. It's a, it's a terrible place to be. Whereas Sovereign Pete, on the other hand, is from the outside looking within. He can see the bedlam of the asylum and he wants nothing to do with it. Now, a lot of people believe that the Agenda 2030 means that they are going to take away everything we own. And I've got some bad news for you. No, they've already done it. You don't own anything now, legally. You will own nothing and you will be happy. Those are the words of Klaus Schwab, who is a, a popular bogeyman of the, the sovereign citizen movement because he's the chairman of the World Economic Forum. I, I don't know if what he says is true. I, I know, though, that what Sovereign Pete is saying is not true, because he's just being a contrarian. He's taking things that are widely believed to be true and just saying the opposite and, and saying it in a confident and forthright manner. Uh, and to a nitwit like Richard Vobes, that comes across as clever. It, he's... Uh, coming across as some kind of guru who reveals all kinds of mystical truths. Up is down, black is white, roses aren't red and violets apparently are not blue. And the things you think you own, well... If you say you own something, it doesn't mean you own it. And you go, huh? that doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? Well, ownership, right? Everyone's heard of the word ownership. That's maritime law. You're entering onto a ship called owner, ownership. If those words had been spoken not by Sovereign Pete, but by a six-year-old child, we might be amused. The idea that somebody could confuse the, the suffix ship with sailing boats and therefore conclude that uh, ownership was regulated by the same body of laws that might regulate ships on the high seas. Well, if a child said something like that, you might uh, pat him on his head and maybe make a video of his misunderstanding and then play it back to him in years to come as an example of how foolish and naive he once was. But Sovereign Pete is not a six-year-old child. He's a 40-something-year-old man who really should know better because I assume he's been brought up speaking the English language. As those of us who did GCSE English know, the suffix ship denotes that uh, these words are abstract nouns like relationship, friendship, leadership, and indeed ownership. It, it denotes a, a quantity or state relating to the, the base noun. That's what we mean by an abstract noun. Now, I'm sure you can go and find far better YouTube channels to discuss English language grammar. And I suggest, Sovereign Pete, if you're watching this, maybe that's what you should do, because it might clear up a great deal of confusion about some of the things that you are saying. Of course, I know Sovereign Pete won't do this, because like every grifter in the world, he makes his money by promoting ridiculous, childlike misunderstandings. Oh, by the way, just something I discovered about hair loss, it's... Uh... It's your diet that causes this, unfortunately. Nutrient it, deficiency. Is that what it is? Yeah. So I you're telling me right. for the nearly 60 years I've been on this earth, I've been nutrient deficient. I don't know. Here's me eating all this organic food and everything. 
So if you want to be as clever and as widely read as Sovereign Pete, the man who seems to know everything about literally every subject, well, you can either sign up to his advanced Sovereign Citizen courses over at uh, the Sovereign Project, or you can embark on a similar line of self-development, uh, as he has done, presumably spending hundreds of hours scouring videos on BitChute. If you don't know what that is, it's an alternative to YouTube that contains mainly conspiracy theory content and blatant anti-Semitism, and of course, sovereign citizen content. Well, you might, after many hundreds of hours of diligent study, become as wise and as witty as Sovereign Pete. And should you achieve that level of wisdom, you too might be invited to go on the Richard Vobes show, because as we have previously established, this channel is exclusively for the purpose of providing a platform to the world's most unsavoury grifters, charlatans, and simpering nincompoops. That is the purpose of Richard Vobes' channel. And this, of course, answers the question at the beginning of the show. What is causing Richard Vobes to become so profoundly cretinized? He, after all, was the man who used to present videos, uh, uh, inoffensive videos, uh, about nature walks in South England. And he has, over the years, become a, a, a wailing nincompoop, a man incapable of normal thought, a, a man who seems even less sober than those uh, ridiculous beeping and blurting aliens we saw just at the beginning of this show. What has happened to him? Well, it's exposure to toxic nitwits like Sovereign Pete. I studied everything. It's not just the financial system or the legal system. It's cancer, global warming, all of the lies, all of it. So I've been busy. I began this show by asking just how much Richard Vobes had fallen his mental decline since eight or so years ago when he used to present harmless shows about rambling through pastures and bracken, nature walks through the county of Sussex with his girlfriend, the lovely Julia. Uh, and where is he now? Well, I suppose he, he still does his occasional walk and uh, makes videos with hens, but he now surrounds himself with ignoramuses, grifters, charlatans, and nitwits, man babies, people whose entire grift is to promote conspiracies and irresponsibility, the idea that you don't have to follow the laws, that laws might not even exist, that uh, you don't have to pay your taxes, or even your gas bill. It's all a fantasy, and uh, the government is exactly the same thing as McDonald's, except you cannot buy a Big Mac. Uh, this is, of course, pretextual bollocks. It is a, a lie that has been made up by people like Richard Vobes because they don't want this kind of responsibility. They can't handle being an adult. So Richard Vobes has reverted to a sort of childlike condition. Has age brought him wisdom? I think the conclusion from today's evidence is clearly not. He has reached an advanced stage of cretinization, one which I'm certain there is no reversal. <sighs> it's sad, isn't it? Well, until next week.